For this week's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a solitaire ring. A few weeks ago, I was um, asked by a customer to come up with a ring that you would wear in place of a wedding band. Um, I did many different versions of it, uh, worked and worked and worked and worked, but in the end, this was the one I chose because to me, I would never be able to afford a diamond this big, um, so I would, you know, I just thought the more simple, the better off it would be. I've also used a bugle bead band, so that way it makes the piece a little bit thicker. So, to make the piece, what you're going to need is a 14 by 10 millimeter crystal oval. Now, these ovals do have a point back to them, but we are going to be... I'm going to show you how to pretty much fully encase the back of the piece so that way you don't have to worry about the um, coating coming off of the crystal. You're also going to need some size 11 Delicas. Um, today I'm going to be using the silver lined um, crystal DB041-TB. And you're also going to need some size 15 seed beads. I'm going to be using galvanized silver in those beads. Um, also, a new thing that I wanted to show you I'm going to be using today is a new thread that I found that I really liked. It's called Sono Thread. Now, you can use your 6-pound fire line for this. It's completely fine. But I just wanted to show you guys this new thread. This is a really fun thread to work with. Um, it is 100% nylon. It stretches just a little bit. It's already waxed for you. It comes in five colors. This one is the white. Um, the cool thing about this, this has 110 yards on a spool. If you can see that there, 100 meters or 110 yards. And the cool thing about this is that this big roll costs $6.50, and this is available on our Etsy site. I really like this new product because it seems to um, thread very easily, and um, the knots seem to stay very well. So, that's just something new. But, to get started, you want to thread on 32 th size 11 delicas and I have threaded my needle onto about a two and a half yard piece of fire line to comp or a two and a half yard piece of this sono to complete the project. So once you have 32 there on the, the cord you're going to bring it down near the end and you're going to tie the little tail and the working thread together. Being careful not to get any of your delegates caught up in the knot. And like I said, this knots pretty easily, so all I normally put in it is maybe two to three single knots. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through one seed bead next to the knot. It doesn't matter if you come this way or that way, but you're going to go through one seed bead next to the knot. Now, we're going to be working in peyote stitch. Um, I do have several peyote stitch videos, so I'm not going to go completely in depth here with this one, but basically to do the peyote stitch, you pick up one delica. You're coming out of this delica here on the base. You're going to skip one delica and go through the very next delica. So I'm coming out of one, I'm skipping one, and I'm going through one. And I'm going to pull the thread so that when you pull the thread, your bead, your new bead, will sit side by side with the one on the base. I'm going to pick up a delica. I'm coming out of this one. I'm going to skip the very next one and then go through one. So coming out of one, skip one, and go through one. So that when I pull, now the two beads sit side by side. And I want to continue around the circle, continue around adding my peyote stitch in this first ring. 
Once you've gone all the way around with your first row, you're coming out of this, this bead here. I'm going to skip a bead and then go through the last bead of my row. Now, remember to step up to start the next round. So to step up, I'm going to go through the last bead of my round and then the very first bead that I added in this round that I've just added so that when I pull it through, and I've gotten that tail out of my way, There we go. When I pull it through, now I have a seamless area here and I'm ready to start my next round. So I'm going to do another round of peyote stitch. So I'm going to pick up a, crisp, or a size 11 Delica. I'm coming out of the one sticking up. I'm going to go through the very next one sticking up. So I'm going to come through this one. And I find it easier for me um, you don't have to do this, but I actually have this just on a, uh, you can use an ink pen or anything that you can find to actually put this on. But I find it easiest when I'm working with an encasement this small just to um, put it on something that will help. So um, now I'm going to continue going around. I'm picking up a seed and I'm just going through the very next seed sticking up. And I'm going to do this round and then step up. And that would be our last round of Delicas that we'll need. So just as with the previous round, I am back to the beginning. I have picked up my Delica. I'm going to go through the last bead of the round and up through the first bead that I added in this current circle. So that that actually finishes up our Delica work. Now, if your little tail starts to get in the way at any time, you can go ahead and um, trim that off. Now, you're done with your delicas, and you're going to be working with your 15s. So, you're going to pick up a 15 and work it just like you would your delicas. We're going to do um, two rounds of 15. So, you're going to pick up a 15, go through the next 15 in the circle. And these rounds, you want to pull nice and tight. We want these to start cupping downward. So pick up a 15. Go through the next Delica sticking up. 15. Go through the next Delica sticking up. And you're going to do this all the way around. And again, you want to do two rounds of size 15 seed beads. Once you finish with your two rounds of peyote stitch using the 15s, this is what you, the inside of your ring will look like. Now, I have stitched through my beads to exit out of what I refer to as an up bead on the back of my piece. And what we're going to start doing is we're going to actually start the encasement to the back of the ring. And you're going to be using your size 15 seed beads. We're going to work a round of peyote stitch using the 15s, but before we do that, you want to take your crystal oval and you're going to lay it face down. We want the color of your crystal to face down against those 15s that we added earlier. So I'm going to take and fit it inside of my encasement. So that it looks just like this. When you flip it over, you see that beautiful endless look there. And when you flip it this way, you see your color. Or, I'm sorry, you don't see your color. You see the foil back. And what we're going to do is we want to work a round of size 15 seed beads. So you're going to pick up a 15 and go through the very next Delica along the top sticking up. Now when you pick that up, and you go around, pull it nice and snug because we want this to start pulling down over the cabochon. So really pull it nice and tight so that they lay down against the cabochon just like that. And do the whole round. Once you've gone all the way around with your 15s, be sure to step up at the end of the row. So I'm coming out here 
I've picked up my 15. I'm going through the last Delica of the row and then up through the first 15 that I added in this row. So that when you go ahead and pull that through, now you have one complete round of peyote with your 15s. Now we're going to do one more round, just regular peyote stitch with the 15s, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to decrease it to cover up the rest of the back. If you have problems um, with the encasement, go back to the earrings that I did. Um, you know, since I've already done a few videos, I don't feel that this needs to be explained. But go back to the um, videos where I encased these and I went a little more into detail so that way you can see. But we're going to do another round of peyote using our 15s, pulling tight, and then we're going to do the um, decreasement. Once you have your two rounds of 15, this is what your encasement should look like at this point. Now we're going to start the decrease and I'm actually going to be using a different color. I'm going to use a darker color 15 here so that, and I'm going to alternate so that you can see what I'm doing. You'll want to do all the same color but for picture purposes and for video purposes I'm going to use a different color. So I'm going to pick up 115. I'm coming out here. This is the last one I did and stepped up to. Once I do that, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through the next two 15s that are sticking up. So I'm going to go through two, one and two, and pull that. I'm going to pick up one 15, do the same thing. I'm going to go through two. 15s sticking up. Pick up one 15. Go through the next two sticking up. Pick up one 15. Go through the next two that are sticking up. Pick up one fifteen. Go to the next two that are sticking up. One fifteen. Go to the next two that are sticking up. One fifteen. Go to the next two sticking up. And then finally, one fifteen. And I'm going to go through the next two sticking up, which will be one single one, and then one which is right before the first 15 that I threaded on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull through both of those. And then I'm going to step up through the first 15 that I added here on this row. So that this is what you should have. You're going to pick up two 15s, and I'm going to go back to my silver here so you can see in between them. So two 15s, and I'm going to go through the next 15 sticking up. So I'm going to go through that next blue one. Two 15s. Go through my next blue one sticking up. Two 15s, go through the next blue. I'm going to do this all the way around. Two 15s, going through my one 15 that I had just decreased to. All the way. So 
so that when I come back to my very first 15, the blue in there, I go through it. And then I'm going to step up by going through the first two 15s that I added in the round. Just like that. Now, you're almost finished with the encasement here on the back. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go through, I'm not adding any beads, I'm going to skip my little space here and go straight through the next set of 15s that I have. So I'm not adding anything, I'm just going to go through and pull real tight. I'm going to pick up one 15. I'm going to go through the next two 15s. Pick up one 15. And now this time, I'm going to go through two, four, six. I'm going to go through six beads, which is three sets. I'm going to go through this set, this set, and this set. So I'm going to go through two beads like I normally would here. And then my next two sets. So I'm going to go through this set here. I'll see if I can't do it all with one go here. That set and that set. There we go. So I'm going through two sets. And pull it. I'm going to pick up a 15. And I'm going to go through my next set. Pick up a 15. And go through my next set. So that now, you have four, let me hold, four 15s that you've added. Two on this side and two on this side. And then you've kind of tugged these sets here closer together. And that's exactly what you want to do. So to get started, to actually um, finish out the ring bottom here, you're not going to step up at anything. You're going to go through a couple of sets here. So I'm going to go through two sets. And then the first 15 I added, and then I'm going to go through, or I'm going to go through a set, go through the 15 I added, go through a set, and then go through the second 15 that I added. Now, I'm going to pick up two 15s. And I'm going to skip all this space here, and I'm going to go straight across to the 15 I added on the other side, and I'm going to pull. Okay, I'm going to go through a set of two here, and then through the 15. And I'm going to pick up two 15s and come straight across to the 15 opposite and go through it. And pull. So that now, the only thing that could even possibly touch you might possibly be that very little point right there, but your beads cover that up pretty much so you don't have to worry about it. Now you have the top finished and you have the back encased in. Yours will not have the blue, yours will be the crystal or whatever color you choose to use. But what I'm going to do is I'm ready to do my ring band. So I'm going to stitch through my set of two right here between my 15s that I had added on this one side. 
and you can use any kind of beads for your ring band that you want. I like to use the bugle beads and this is a six millimeter bugle which is what they call a number three bugle bead. Okay and I'm just using the silver lined so that when I finish this is what my band will look like. So to get it started I'm going to pick up two 15s, a bugle, and two 15s. I'm going to, my thread is exiting in this direction, so I'm going to come back through those same two beads again so that when I do, it will form a little semicircle, I guess you could call it. So that now my bugle sits out just like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reinforce this while I'm here. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the two 15s, the bugle, the two 15s, and then my base two 15s. And those two base 15s are getting really, really tight to go through. So you'll only be able to reinforce that once. And then I'm going to go through the two 15s that I added and then the bugle. Now you're going to be working in ladder stitch to add this band. So you're going to pick up a bugle. We're going to be making a circle. So I'm going to come back down through that same bugle that I had added. You see the new bugle goes right next to the old one. And then I'm going to go right through the new bugle. Now, I like to go ahead and reinforce um, while I'm doing this type of ring band. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go down through the old bugle and then up through the new bugle again just to reinforce that connection. We're going to do that again. We're going to pick up a bugle. My thread is exiting in this direction. I want to come around to make a circle. So I'm going to go through the same bugle. I'm going to come through the new bugle that I just added. Now again, I want to reinforce while I'm here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back through the bugle, the previous bugle there. And then through the new bugle. I'm going to show you one more time. I'm going to pick up a bugle. My thread is exiting in this direction so I want to come back around to make a circle. So I'm going to go through the bugle and then through the new bugle that I just added. I'm going to go ahead and reinforce this little connection here. So I'm going to come through the bugle that I had previously added. And then through the one that I just added. Now you want to continue until you have enough bugles to make the desired ring band. Once you have the ring band to the length that you have desired, you're ready to connect it. Now, I will tell you that you will, you will think it goes a lot quicker because they're bugles and they're much bigger, but really, I mean, you get a good bit done and it's really not that big, so um, just be aware on that one. But I'm going to pick up two, I'm coming out of my last bugle, I'm going to pick up two 15s and I'm going to come directly across to the set of two opposite the one that I started the band with. And I'm going to try and zoom in here a little bit more so you can see maybe a little better. There we go. So I've got my two and I'm going to come through the two 15s here opposite where I started the band. So I'm going to pull those. Pull that on through to where your band 
is now connected partly there. And then I'm going to pick up two more 15s and I'm going to come through the bugle, the last bugle that I added. And I'm going to pull. so that now that's connected. You'll want to reinforce to so go back through the, the 15s you added, through the two base 15s, through the two you added, and then back through the bugle again. Now, if you can reinforce that again, you can do that. If not, then you're ready to tie off the thread. So I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna wiggle it underneath the thread bridge between the last bugle and the one before it. We'll pull that thread on through, leave myself a little loop, stick the needle through the loop and pull. And I'm going to stitch through the piece, go through a bugle, go under the thread between two bugles, leave yourself a little loop, stick the needle through the loop, and pull. And with this sono thread, it doesn't take much at all to get this stuff to stay. So I'm going to go ahead and trim the tail on that. So that now, when I put it on, I have a beautiful new solitaire ring. These crystals, as well as the Delicas, the 15s, and the Bugles, um, are on our Etsy site, as well as um, the colorway kits for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you again next week for another great one.